In 2020, YouTube demonetized every video on Shane Dawson's YouTube channel, an unexpectedly decisive move from the infamously weak-willed video hosting site, and one which marks a spectacular fall from grace for what had long been one of the platform's hosted child success stories. So how does someone with 20 million YouTube subscribers, a best-selling single, a Hollywood movie, and over a decade of online success become a pariah almost overnight? And what does Shane's rise, painstaking fall, and then immediate comeback say about the internet and society at large? Large. Because in the way, we do live in a society. It's time to ask, what happened to Shane Dawson? Shane Lee Yor started making videos when he was seven or eight years old, and that love continued into his teenage years. By the time Shane discovered YouTube, the platform was already three years old, but it was merely a shadow of what it would eventually grow to be. Shane saw YouTube as another potential outlet for the videos he loved to make. And his goal was never to be an internet star, he wanted to be a writer and director out in Hollywood, California. IA. YouTube was just a way to build his portfolio until he got there. A lot of Shane's early videos have been removed now, but one of the first was a tour of the store that he was employed employed at at the time, which featured him pole dancing and making lewd jokes in front of elderly customers. Almost as soon as it was uploaded, it got Shane fired. Start as you mean to go on. More than that, it also got everyone else who was featured in the video fired, including Shane's mother, his brother, and about six other employees. It wasn't the most auspicious start to his video career, but at least he took the lesson from that and stopped forever. How bad was this video that they were like, we're gonna just fire your mum as well? <laughs> Just because we're really mad at you. But Shane was not deterred and continued making new videos while he took up a new job as a security guard at an aquarium. I'm not sure whether this was to keep people away from the fish or to stop the fish from escaping, like the villain in some kind of Pixar movie. Soon he was racking up tens of thousands of views, which was incredibly impressive work for the early years of YouTube. And as his views climbed, he started to get paid through YouTube's brand new partner program. And in a short space of time, he'd gone from a hobbyist to a full-time YouTuber and Richmond. So what kind of videos was he making? Well, as a young kid, Shane says he was inspired by sketch and character comedy, like the kind on his beloved show, Mad TV. And his early work reflects that, with a strong focus on fun, original characters. These characters included Ned the Nerd, a young black girl named Shanene, oh no, a young black man named S. Deezy, a Mexican woman named Guadalupe, and a lesbian called Barb the Lesbian. It's miraculous this man got cancelled with this level of quality content. These characters were based almost entirely on offensive cultural and ethnic stereotypes and were constantly racist, sexist, and homophobic. Shane's frequent use of blackface in particular was something that would haunt him continuously throughout his career and would ultimately, over 10 years later, be the cause for his cancellation. I mean, that cancellation only lasted like three months, but hey, it was the first one that actually stuck. And I want to be clear, this kind of stuff was not something he did occasionally, not that that would in any way excuse it. By his own admission, he said, quote, blackface was something I did a lot. He portrayed his own black characters, but he would also sometimes portray black celebrities like Chris Brown and Wendy Williams. And on top of that, Shane's comedy for the duration of his career would feature just pit dark humor, including jokes about r incest, pedophilia, drugging, physical abuse, and then he would like mix that in with the racism as well. To form an experience that was like shockingly dark and spiteful for someone that's now seen as like kind of gentle and mild mannered. Like everyone thinks Shane's like just kind of this like soft guy now. But if you watch his early videos, aside from the offensive stuff, they were just so mean. I don't see anything wrong with me wearing chocolate pudding, pretending to be a black person dancing around with fake boobs in my friend's backyard while I'm ripping her. <laughs> the story of Shane Dawson is not one of someone who got famous and then made some regrettable actions, but rather it's the story of someone who started their career with offensive behavior, I like to make my eyes all Japanese continued that behavior, and then was only held accountable for it much, much later, as everyone kind of woke up a little bit and was like, hold on, so it's just blackface every time in these videos? In this way, the story of Shane Dawson is not just about the rise and fall of one man, it's about the widespread failures of everyone who permitted and even rewarded his behavior for so long. That's not to say that Shane's racist videos weren't met with criticism until recently. There's been people who've been calling him out the whole time, but those voices were not heard or more likely were actively ignored for basically the whole time. But despite the highly controversial nature of his content, Shane's star continued to rise. And Shane had become a bona fide star. He was even given the chance to direct his own movie called Not Cool. This was part of a TV competition show where people could make their own movie. And famous actor Zachary Quinto, Siler himself, who was one of the producers on the show, called Shane's film, quote, deeply offensive and tasteless and went on to say that he should not be making films at all and he also removed his name from the film in total disgust. Now, I'm not in show business, but is that good? 
<laughs> is that a good sign? But Shane continued to grow and develop, launching a podcast, doing music, wonderful music. He got tons of views. He had his makeup series, his conspiracy series, which were both just hours and hours of B-roll of Shane and Jeffrey and other people just wandering around. Not a single second of footage cut from these series. 90% of it is just Shane on his like couch just being like, man, we've really got to film something soon. This is, we are really taking the piss. Like 15 hours of them being like, shall we make a palette? And then right at the end being like, we did it. <laughs> We made the palette. Although I think the real palette is the time we wasted along the way. This was all until everything came to a head in 2020. In the wake of the murder of George Floyd, there was a renewed conversation about the state of race relations in the world, but particularly in the United States. People started to take a closer look at creators and celebrity who had been as you might say, very racist. And Shane quickly got swept up in all of this because it was just a never ending archive of terrible stuff he'd made. And he was already starting to be in the public's bad books anyway around that time after some truly bizarre sexual jokes he made about his cat. One time I laid my cat down on her back. I moved her little chicken legs spread open or whatever. And I was like, if I just like hump, but like on her tummy, like that's not weird, like whatever. And then I humped it, I humped it, I humped it, and it kept going, it kept going, and it came all over the cat. No, you did not. It was like my first sexual experience. No I was also way. like 19, <laughs> so it's like, you know. Wait a minute. And about how he didn't come on the cat, and please stop asking him about that, among other things. And this was just kind of the final straw. Shane lost 600,000 subscribers. He uploaded a 20 minute apology video. No, I'm sorry that happened, but I'm not reading all that. It's called Taking Accountability. And he said, quote, I've done a lot of things in my past that I hate, that I wish I could make go away. I don't know who that person is anymore. I should probably have lost my career at the time. There's no amount of apologizing that can take it away. Blackface was something that I did a lot on my channel and there's no excuse for it. There's literally no excuse. I made a video six years ago talking about it and I gave excuses and it was wrong, but I didn't do the work. I didn't actually look into the history of it and why it's so wrong and why people were so upset. That's the thing, most people, most people just do a bunch of racist stuff and then they go and learn history and they go, wait, I've just realized it's bad. But his troubles didn't end there. New clips began to recirculate on social media, including one where Shane mimes a sexual act in front of a poster of Willow Smith, who was 11 years old at the time, while singing the lyrics to her 2011 song, Whip My Hair. I'd actually forgotten about that one because there were so many controversial Shane clips. I remember Jada Pinkett Smith came out and just slammed him. And a video emerged of Shane joking about the death of Trayvon Martin. Trayvon Martin, well, maybe you wouldn't have been walking this, around the streets if you had a job. Hey, why not? Why not another terrible thing in this list? Now, Target removed his books from their shelves. Morphe removed his makeup products from their site. YouTube took away his monetization. It looked like Shane was done. Finally, justice has been served. He was going to make good on all the things he said in his apology video. He was going to do a bit like Jenna Marbles did. He was going to say, look, I I'm going to just leave the internet. I'm going to become a different person, a better person. Perhaps I'll become a yak farmer like Jeffree Star and start a new life. And that's what he did for about a year and a half. And then he came back later with a video called The Haunting of Shane Dawson and just carried on as he has been before. Just like not really acknowledging that stuff anymore. And he's getting millions of views and no lessons have been learned. In fact, recently he was on Perez Hilton's podcast to cover it on YouTube News. And he was like, it was pretty good that I got cancelled because it gave me a break from making videos. And, and it let me deal with being cancelled, which I was scared of. And now I'm doing great. So... There you go, folks. There's justice in the universe. Good things happen to good people. Bad people always get their comeuppance. Sunshines and rainbows, the end. Who would you like to see us cover next on What Happened To? Let us know in the comments down below. And until next time... We can just fade it out.